we'll discuss some intriguing similarities between Yachiro and Lineage. We won't only focus on the similarities but also on the points of difference through which we will delve into some distinctive aspects of the stories of these two characters who are connected to two of the most remarkable characters, Kinpachi, Zaraki and Stark. And to begin guys, let's start with something that I find really similar between these two characters, which is the nature of the presentation given to each one of them. For example, Lilinich was initially introduced as a Franktheon, a subordinate character to Stark, similar to Mila Rose, Apache, Sun Sun, who are Franktheon to Halebel, or Shaolong and the other Arankaras who were under Grimmage's command. Every espada has Arankaras under them. However, Lilith was special. Unlike many others, she was the only Franktheon with Stark, unlike Grimijo and Halibel, and she had a close relationship with Stark. And this is the opposite to the relationship between Noitura and his Franktheon, Tesla, and thus the relationship between Stark and Lilith, and somehow indicated that Lilith was not an ordinary subordinate to Stark. And we find the same thing with Zaraki and Yachiro. Yachiro was also introduced as merely a subordinate to Zaraki, specifically as vice captain, like the other vice captains. And the atmosphere surrounding them didn't make anyone see Yachiro as just a vice captain but rather as a cute Shinigami girl always following Zaraki around. Therefore guys, it can be said that Lilinich and Yachiro shared the point of being of the same gender, female, in a small and cute form, and they both had a close relationship with the ones they followed, Stark and Zaraki. Lilinich was considered Stark Franktheon, and Yachiro was considered Zaraki's vice captain. Now guys, let's move on to the point of power of both Lilinich and Yachiro. Naturally, here I'm talking about their power and their fake or false identities, meaning Yachiro as a Shinigami and Lilinich as a Franktheon. Neither of them was strong as Stark and Zarak, especially Lilinich, whose strength was not significant. And this was evident when she fought Okitaki, who blocked her attacks with his sealed sword without any effort. A bakodo of level 8 was enough to push her aside. Not only that, but even her use of Sero was ineffective as Okitake blocked it with his bare hands. And these things reinforced uh, the idea that Lilinich was truly just a Franktheon subordinate to Stark. On the other hand, one of the unknowns about Yachiro as a vice captain was the extent of her power. True, they are a vice captain, we know nothing about them like the legendary Shinigami Iba. However, since Yachiro was associated with Zaraki, there was curiosity about her power level. Unlike Lilinich, Yachiro in her Shinigami form demonstrated her power in several famous scenes, most notably when she warned that Shinigami not to upset or disturb Zaraki, while we saw Kobo portrayed her aura in the form of a panther, or when she stood on Ichigo's shoulder with lightning speed. These hints, unlike Lilinich, indicated that Yachiro was really strong. However guys, in Thousand Year Blood War arc, it was revealed that Yachiro can indeed fight and also has a Zanpakuto. Not only that, but Yachiro possessed the same combat traits as Zaraki, relying on instinct in battle. And this instinct was a crucial factor in determining Zaraki's power, as it allows him to unconsciously increase or decrease his power. And Yachiro relied on the same instinct to summon the creatures Moko Moko and Honi Honi. <laughs> yes, those are their names. And her Zanpakuto was unique in that. Unlike most Shikai, her sword remained in seed state, but she could summon these creatures, Sampo Kinju. And as you can see guys, unlike Lineage, Yachiro had a power level that could be considered greater than that of some vice captains or Shinigamis. However, ultimately, neither Lineage or Yachiro possessed their true power or identities. They were part of the true power holders, and this is one of the biggest points they share together. For a long time, many used uh, the case of Lineage and Stark to explain Yachiro's true identity before Kobo clarified this in one of his famous answers. And speaking of Lilinich, the biggest difference between Zaraki and Stark is that Zaraki is a Shinigami and Stark is a Halo and Arankara. And Zaraki wanted to gain power and become stronger and fight in powerful opponents. And Stark on the other hand was strong from the beginning 
Noah's one with lineage in one body. Thus, the original body wanted to divide itself to reduce its power. We don't know if the original body was an Arankara or just a hollow, but we know that when the split occurred, Stark and Lilinich were Arankara at the time. And unlike many Arankara who sell their powers, their hollow power in the sword, Stark hollow power was divided between him and Lilinich. For example, other Espada need their swords to release their resurrections. But Stark needs Lilin. She can be considered like his sword, and without her, he cannot release his resurrection. Therefore, at the start, many thought that she was just a fraction. I'm speaking about Lilin. But indeed, she was part of him. And together, they form one body. What's unique about Stark and Lilinich is that they knew this truth from the beginning. When Lilinich first appeared before Stark, she asked him about his name. She knew from the start that this person in front of her was part of her, but she still asked for his name. And he replied that his name was Stark, thus their relationship was harmonious as they both understood their true nature. And this understanding was not present between Zarak and Yachi, who was not a Shinigami but part of Zaraki's main Zanpakuto, Nuzarachi, specifically his Banka. And the relationship between Zaraki and Yachiro is more complex than between Stark and Lilinich. Kubo tried to maintain the mystery of Zaraki's power until the end of the manga. Now one of the most mysterious aspects is why and how Yachiro appeared. For example, we know why Lilinich existed. She and Stark were originally one body and split due to loneliness. However, we don't know why Yachiro appeared. And in this scene, where Yachiro appears from the grass and approaches Zaraki, she seemed like a lost child and able to speak. If there were other people with Zaraki, he might have realized that she was his Zanpakuto, or at least not an ordinary soul. Because at that moment, she still has her Zanpakuto power and was not yet a Shinigami, meaning only Zaraki could see her, thus the circumstances of Yachiro's appearance made Zaraki think she was just a lost child. Even when Zaraki asked her name, she couldn't speak, but pointed to the Zanpakuto, a clear indication she came from the Zanpakuto. What happened next changed Yachiro's identity. By giving her the name Yachiro, the same name as Yachiro Unahana, Zaraki gave her a Shinigami identity, making her a separate entity from his power until he learned the name of his Zanpakuto, Nuzarashi, and communicated with it. At that moment, and when Yachiro heard the name Nuzarashi, she became invisible, and her Shihakusho, which she wore as a Shinigami, had nobody to fit on anymore. Thus, she returned to the main Zanpakuto, but as a Bankai. And we can notice, guys, that both Lineage and Yachiro returned to their original form in a similar manner. For instance, Kiski said that Resurrection is like a Shinigami's Bankai as it releases the person's true power, and to release his resurrection, Stark needs Lilinich, just as Zaraki needs Yachiro to release his Bankai. And this brings us guys to the final point concerning their combat styles. Despite the similarity in that Lilinich and Yachiro return to the main body, Lilinich becomes part of Stark in his resurrection form where she transforms into the guns from which he fires Zero. On the other hand, Yachiro's power benefits Zaraki at the Bankai level through his Zanpakuto. And here we can see guys the difference between Arankara and Shinigami. Arankaras gain strength when they revert to their hollow powers and Stark returns to his original strength when he becomes one body with Lilinich. In the opposite for Zaraki or Shinigami in general, accessing to the full power of their Zanpakuto requires them to transform a part of their souls into the Zanpakuto. The essence becomes an entity with its own personality and fights alongside its wielder as a team. And we've seen this with several characters, most notably Ohana fighting alongside Kyoraku against Lilibaro, or Uruzakuru with Azachiro Soya. So the same thing happened with Zaraki. When Yachiro enabled Zaraki to reach the Bankai stage, Zaraki's appearance changed and he benefited from the fundamental power of the Bankai. However, like Ohana, Yachiro remained by Zaraki's side. In the end, guys, it can be said that Kubo seems to enjoy creating complex backgrounds for characters who appear small but hide significant secrets, like Neil, the former Espada, 
or lineage in Yachio. These two characters share many similarities, despite being from different worlds, one being part of Arankara and the other part of a Shinigami Zanpakuto. So guys, what do you think about Yachiro and Lineage? Can you tell me more differences or more similarities between them? Write them in the comments and see you guys in my next video.